I had an earwig in my mouth. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Since Halloween is just around the corner, I thought I would buy and test out three different Halloween craft kits on Etsy. And they might potentially give you some inspiration for Halloween this year. It also might not, we don't know. We'll soon find out. Okay, so this is the first Halloween craft kit that I bought. And it's by a seller called Hot Pie Craft. And it's basically these little stackable fabric pumpkins, which I think look really cute actually. I think it's quite a nice idea. And it costs 10 pounds and 40 pence. And for each of these Halloween craft kits, I'm going to be giving them a rating out of five pumpkins. So let's see what this one gets. Okay, so we have some fluff. I like the wrapping paper on this. I assume this is your fabrics. Yes. I'll keep that bit of paper. It's quite nice, isn't it? Don't want to waste anything. <laughs> we've got little dog stickers on here. That's so cute. So we've got a needle here and another needle. I am aware that this is a textile craft kit. So I'm challenging myself a little bit. I hope they've got instructions in here. And they've left me a little card saying, thank you for your purchase, little smiley face. We will be thrilled to see you again. Please enjoy 10% of your next purchase with our, I'm not going to tell you the promo code. We value your feedback. Please Please feel free to leave us a review as it greatly helps us. I will once I've tried it. The presentation's quite nice, I like it already. And they do give you some instructions, so that's good. Right, I'll have a quick read of this just to see what I'm doing. For some reason when I bought this, I thought I bought three, but I haven't bought three, I've just bought one big one. I'm sure it said three on there. Maybe I've read it wrong, so I'm just doing one fabric pumpkin, which to be fair is quite good because there's a lot of instructions. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go step by step with this one because I'm finding it a little bit complicated. So take the fabric, place it in front of you, making sure that it's inside out, and it's already come stitched on one side, so that's quite nice. Take the sharp small needle with double thread, I assume, this is the double thread. I hate thread needles that never see the hole and the hole on this is absolutely tiny. Okay, so I've got my needle with my double thread. Now what do I do? So it says, sew along one end as on the picture, gather the fabric together, tie a knot and cut the thread. So I just sew one side together. It says a running stitch. I don't know what a running stitch is. I'm just gonna Google what a running stitch is just before I do something wrong. Ah, oh, I see. I thought it was that. Okay, so a running stitch is where you go like that. <laughs> Okay, I think I've done that. Gather the fabric together, tie a knot, and cut the thread. Oh, okay. Ah. Ah, check me out. Oh, I'm a pro at this. This is great. This is great. This is great. First step done, and I feel like I've done that properly. So now the next step is turn your fabric inside out. You will end up with something that looks like a belly button. This is the bottom of your pumpkin. We're aiming for el Ellie button. We're aiming for belly button. I don't know whether my belly button looks like that, but I feel like that's what I'm supposed to have. I feel so proud that I've just made this. Like, look at that. That could be a hat. Anyway, now I need to stuff it. All I need to do is shove my fluff into this. Okay, so now I need to do exactly the same on this other side. So I need to do another running stitch, gather the fabric, and close the hole in the middle, secure with a knot. Okay, I feel like I can, well, I should be able to do that. I've already done it. Okay, that was a lot quicker than before. What I like about this is I don't think you have to be like super precise with it. I think it's a craft that is very forgiving, which is always nice when it comes to something like stitching. <laughs> okay, so what do I do now? So I need to flatten my pumpkin and spread the stuffing inside of it into a donut-like shape, then sew the pumpkin four to five times for it to hold the flattened shape. As a result, you should achieve something similar to a donut. <laughs> Okay, that's looking a little bit more like a pumpkin. Oh no, I've got a gap. Oh, I've got a massive gap. What happened there? I have to sew you closed. It's fine, this can be the bottom part. Now we will start with the segments. Take the big needle, which is this one, and thread it with the thick white thread, which is obviously this one. Pass the needle through the bottom of the pumpkin and pull it from the top. Wrap the thread around the outside of the pumpkin, then pass the needle from the bottom to the top of the pumpkin again. Tighten the thread after each segment. Complete this until you have created as many pumpkin segments as you require. We recommend having around six segments for pumpkin. Fix the thread with a knot. Okay, I think I can do that. This needle doesn't go through. It's too dull. <clears throat> oh wait, I'll just try and find a hole. They could have done with a metal needle. I'm just gonna say that this plastic one's shit. Oh wait, 
Oh, I've got it, I've got it. Okay. Right, segment time. Okay, done. I'm not gonna lie, I found that a little bit tricky. I think that has more to do with me than this actual kit. I feel like it's kind of looking like a pumpkin. Okay, and the final step is to take this little bit, which is your pumpkin stem, and to sew it on the top with the white thread. It's gonna be so tricky to do. I feel like I've spent the majority of this time just trying to thread this needle. It keeps unthreading itself, and it's bothering me a lot. All right. I think that'll do. No, it's come undone. I'm just waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up. I can't. I can't stitch it on. It's too fiddly. Because my stitching skills aren't very good, I'm worried that if I manhandle this too much to try and get this attached, it's just all going to come apart. So I'm just going to glue it on. Because believe it or not, I've been making this for nearly an hour now. <laughs> it might not seem like it because I probably edited it down quite a lot. But yes, it's taken me nearly an hour to make this little pumpkin. Obviously, if you're an expert at uh, textiles and so on and stuff. This would probably take you about 20 minutes or something, but for an amateur like me, it just takes just, just a little bit longer. All right, let's hot glue you on. There we go. Ah, oh, so much quicker, so much easier. So there we have it, my little finished pumpkin. And I think it's really adorable, actually. It is so cute. Complete and utter pain in the ass to make but I think it's been worth it. And the fact that someone like me has managed to make a textile craft project as ambitious as this, you know, that's a big win. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this little craft kit five pumpkins out of five. I actually really enjoyed it, and I think it's a really clever idea. It's very, very cute. But anyway, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this is the next Halloween craft kit that I bought, and it's from a store called Deco Patch Store, and it's a Deco Patch face mask kit. So we're gonna be creating a creepy Halloween face mask, and this costs 13 pounds, and 95 pence. So it's very different from the last one we've just tried. So let's see what it's like. Okay, so I've got a mask here, some glue, and I assume this is the papers. It's not called Deco Patch, is it? It's called Deco Page. Have they made like a little like pun and change the name to Deco Patch because they specialize in Deco Page? I think that's what they've done. Unless I've been saying it wrong my entire life. Right, so we've got a paintbrush in here as well. A blank bit of white paper. Okay, some nice little tissue papers. And then we've got a little instruction leaflet. So it says Deco Patch is a range of uniquely designed and printed paper manufactured using a special formula to give it strength and durability. You can decorate almost any solid surface with Deco Patch paper from paper mache, shells, glass, wood, ceramic stone, wood, plastics, metals, etc. So basically everything. I'm just wondering on their kit. Their kit looks different to what I've got. They paint, no, they must have painted theirs, but they don't include any paint in it. So I think that's a little bit misleading. All right, so I guess I'm just decoupage in this mask. I will say that the mask they give you, it's not like a cheap, like, shitty paper mask. It's quite solid. It's really firm, actually. So that's nice. I'll give it credit for that. I'm not entirely sure what this is for. Maybe this was just to protect the other papers because it's a different texture to the others, whereas obviously these are tissue paper. I guess I'd just do what I want with it, really, don't I? We'll have a little play around and see what I can come up with. I always smell glue from craft kits, not because I want to get high. Oh, I've got it on my lip. Ugh. Because they always say that it's like this fancy special glue and usually it's just PVA, but this doesn't smell like PVA glue. It's got like a hint of PVA, but then something else in it. I'm a PVA expert, you see. Okay, well, let's have a play. I will say I do find decoupage just very relaxing. It's quite an easy thing to do, isn't it? Oh, also, since it's Halloween, I have a little bit of a real life horror story that happened to us earlier in the week. So normally when I go to bed, I always have a drink of water. I use this bottle just at my bedside table, just in case I get thirsty and I need to, you know, wet the palate. And anyway, I went to bed like you do, fast asleep, lovely sleep. I slept like a log and I woke up in the morning and obviously I have a really dry mouth. So I reached for my water, took a nice big sip of my water and I felt this thing in my mouth, which I thought might have been like a bit of fluff or something, but then I realized this thing in my mouth started to move around. So I spat the water and whatever else was in my mouth out onto the floor to find an earwig crawling on the floor. I had an earwig in my mouth. The earwig must have crawled into my straw during the night, just fell asleep in there and I sucked it up and it went in my mouth. I was absolutely mortified. I think the only good thing about it was the fact that I was half asleep because I just woke up, so I wasn't particularly conscious. So I couldn't really 
understand the horror that had just happened to us. If it had been during the day and I was fully conscious, I'd have, I don't know, I'd have just had a heart attack. An earwig, out of all things, an earwig, the worst kind of bug you could possibly think of. It was absolutely awful. So that's my little horror story that happened to us this week. But let me know in the comments if you can top that. You know, I've set the bar quite high. Earwig in the mouth, you have to beat that. So tell me something horrific or weird or creepy that's happened to you recently. I don't think anyone will beat it. You can't beat it. An earwig in the mouth. And here's my mask finally finished and I think it actually looks really good even though I didn't particularly have a design or I didn't really have an idea of what I was actually doing. I think it still looks kind of spooky, a little bit weird and a little bit freaky as well. And I didn't think that craft kit was too bad actually. For the price I paid, not bad at all. I'm gonna give it four pumpkins out of five. I, th I think it was a good little craft kit. Okay, and the final Halloween craft kit that I bought is this one here from I Heart Buttons UK. And it's a Halloween tree made out of buttons and it costs 16 pounds. And I think it looks quite cute and a little bit different. I have a feeling this is gonna be more of a child's Halloween craft kit, but I'm still gonna try it, you know? I might really enjoy it myself. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, I think it's definitely made for kids because there's pictures of children on their little postcard. I find this like a really weird combination of things. It says that they do craft kids, children's parties, craft workshops, and hen parties. One of those things don't belong. All right, so it's a company that specializes in button crafts. I've got a link to a video demonstration. I'm not gonna watch it. I think I know what I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna be sticking buttons onto a cone. They've given you a lot of instructions on how to assemble this button tree and basically the main instruction is to just pin the buttons onto this little polystyrene cone and also the one thing I would say is if you're going to ship this I would ship your cone in a little bit of a bigger box because the tip of it is now bent right let's see what else I've got oh I get Harry Bores oh 10 pumpkins out of five should definitely not have tipped this out these are them long lethal pins. I remember when I was a kid, I stood on one of these and it went right through my foot. So it's bringing back terrifying memories. You get a lot in it for 10 pound and you get free Harry Bores. The thing is, I was kind of prepared to slag this off a little bit, mainly because like it's a kitschy kids craft thing, but it's winning us over with sweets. It does have packaging peanuts, which I can't stand. I think we all know that by now, but I'm just gonna let that slide because I got Harry Bores. Right, let's pin all these buttons to this. I have a feeling it's gonna take us a while. You get some really nice buttons in here. Like look at that little pumpkin one. Okay, I'm just stopping here because there's a couple of issues I'm having with this kit, unfortunately. Some of the buttons, the pin heads go straight through, so you can't actually pin the buttons onto the corn. And also it gets to the point where the pins start to poke through the form, and I dread to think how bad it's gonna get when it gets to the top. So with that being said, I think I'm gonna hot glue the rest of the buttons on, because I know I'm gonna get issues as soon as I get to this top part. So I don't think pins are particularly the right thing for this. So I'll just wait for my hot glue gun to heat up, and then I'm just gonna hot glue them all on. <laughs> Okay, so here's my finished Halloween tree, and I think it looks alright. There are a few gaps where I could have stuck a few more buttons, but it was taken as absolutely ages to do. It's also covered in hot glue strands, but we'll just call them cobwebs. And I was going to give this craft kit five pumpkins out of five, mainly because they give us free Harry Bores, and also because of how many materials you actually get in this craft kit for the price. I've still got tons and tons of buttons left, but unfortunately, the design flaw of sticking pins into it, it's just not the right method. It doesn't work work properly. So for that reason, I'm going to have to knock it down a pumpkin and I'm going to give it four pumpkins out of five. But it's still not bad and I think for a kid's craft kit, I think they would really enjoy it. So that's just about does it for today's video of trying some Halloween craft kits from Etsy. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know what your thoughts are on these craft kits down below. Would you be willing to try any or are they just not your kind of thing? I don't know. I think they've been all right. And if you like Halloween, you'll be happy to know that next Friday will also be a Halloween themed video with hopefully lots of Halloween arts and crafts. So that's something to look forward to, isn't it?